Anna lost, so we all, all the Mullen people scattered around the whole world in the mountains, and now we're everywhere. So, do you consider this your short? What do you mean? Are you starving yourself? No. Are you really 5'4"? Yes, I'm 5'4". No, 5'5"? Five, five? The fuck? I was ta me talking about my girlfriend's height right now. No, I'm 5'5", five, 5'4". Five, five, I'm like 5'5", five, five, basically. Um, fuck, not me saying that I was 5'4". Um, I'm 5'5". Five, five. Uh, Who started TikTok just for fun as a part of a trend? Um, not doing it for the trend. I actually started TikTok because I saw an article. Don't know where, when, how I saw it. But about some guy getting an acting job from posting POVs or acting TikToks. So, like, do you think that you're short? Yes. For an Asian, no. But for me, yes. Um... But I did start TikTok because I saw that people were getting acting jobs with their acting TikTok. So, obviously it worked. So, yeah, that's why I started TikTok. Um, she appears to be reserved about her family history. She has not mentioned anything about her parents until now. She has a sister named Gona. Um, my family history. Uh, my dad was in the Navy. Uh, he traveled all the world, all around the world. My birth mom was a drug addict. Um, my birth mom was a drug addict. Uh, didn't take care of me and my sister well. I went to foster care. Me and my sister went to foster care and we split up. I actually have a half brother too, which was my mom, my, my birth mom's mo uh, son. That wasn't my dad's son. Um, but she didn't take care of all three of us well. Um... My half-brother's name is Dakota. Haven't talked to him in years. Um, we got split up when we were younger. So whenever we went to foster care, she lost custody of all of us. My dad didn't have custody over my half-brother, so he had to go with his birth father. And then me and my sister went back to my dad. Um, we were in foster care for like six months before they could get us back. So yeah, I was in the foster system. Um, my birth mom missed court because she was doing drugs. Um, my birth mom tried to kill me in the womb with drugs, um, that she was taking. That's why I came out with asthma. Um, yeah, that's kind of all the family history that I really know of. Uh, yeah, I know a lot more, but none of that really matters. But yeah, my dad was in the Navy. My birth mom was a drug addict, alcoholic. Then my dad married my stepmom. Um, she's an alcoholic. They got divorced. Um, but before they got divorced, I left at like 14, 15 and became homeless for five years. So, yeah. Boom. Her childhood was really great. A lot of care and love from her parents. No. That is incorrect. My childhood... My childhood was traumatic and horrible and disgusting and no child should ever but your dad let you be homeless. He didn't care. I literally called him and was like, I'm leaving. And he was like, go, bye. So, um, yeah, I did not have a good childhood at all. Uh, so you could take that out of your article. All right. She has not disclosed much about her education and qualifications. She has completed her high school education. The details regarding where she studied remain unknown. Uh, I dropped out of high school my senior year. Um, I dropped out first my sophomore year and then I went back um, probably a year later in Colorado. I dropped out sophomore year in Nor in Concord, North Carolina at Central Cabarrus High School, um, where they actually filmed Paper Towns, if you know that movie. Um, then I, a year and a half later, I went to Colorado 
and I went to Thompson Valley High School and I dropped out my senior year because I wasn't going to graduate and I was getting bullied too much and I just needed to get out of there so I left came back to North Carolina so um yeah I didn't graduate high school at all not recommending that for everybody um when I first dropped out of high school I had no plan and I was living paycheck to paycheck starving myself and not having a good thing do you have a relationship with your siblings or family? Um, I do have a relationship with my siblings. My stepsister, Savannah Gray, my stepbrother, Donovan Gray, and my biological sister, Gona Lee. Yes, I do have a relationship with them. Barely any relationship with my parents. Um, but yeah. She's very popular social media star. Um... I'm not single. Um, I'm dating a very beautiful girl named Nika Clayman. Uh, 17, about to turn 18 in June 26th. But yeah, I'm not single. Mahula Lee looks very attractive with beautiful dark brown eyes and black hair. She has a slim, lean body physique. However, the details statistics showing that her body measures are not known. I, my height is 5'5". Five five. Um, five, 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 six, around that area. Um, my weight, if people really want to fucking know my weight, um, I'm like, like 140, 138, around that, if you want to round it up, 140 pounds. Um, but yeah. Thanks for calling me attractive, but I don't really think that that should be in an article. Because some people get, you know, reassurance from articles, and if you don't put in every time that someone's attractive, then they're going to think they're not. But thank you for saying I'm attractive, but I don't think that that should be in an article. You know, but... 2.3 million followers. 2.8 million now. Love all of you guys. Who is Mahua Lee's boyfriend? Y'all really ask if who's my boyfriend? Here's my coming out story. I'm a lesbian. Or I like women. I don't have a boyfriend. You have an iPhone 12, right? Yes. But yeah, uh, that's weird. Alright. Uh... <laughs> uh yeah that's that's weird she openly discussed her abandonment issues and ptsd yes i have abandonment issues and i do have post-traumatic stress disorder i was diagnosed relationship status this is another article She's lesbian, she's open, she has one past relationship, however, she has not disclosed who she was involved with through her Instagram post. She opened up about her attempted suicide after breaking up with a girlfriend. Furthermore, she's cleared that it is not the fault of her ex-girlfriend. Yes, um, I do not, some of you know who my ex-girlfriend is, um, but the one about the suicide post on my, um, trigger warning, uh, on my Instagram um, I have not disclosed any information about who that person is, nor will I ever. Um, yeah, nor will I ever open up on who my longest relationship was with. I will not disclose her name, nor will I disclose anything about, you know, anything. Um, but that was when I attempted to end my life after, um that relationship it was 100% not her fault um 
I was alone, didn't have anybody. It was me still being homeless, had no- nothing. So I was just like, I'm going to just end it, you know. But um, it was not the fault of this person. Um, but I've had ones that matter. I'm not counting the girlfriend that I had in middle school because there's no point. Um, I've had three exes. Uh, no, I'm not going to name them. Some of you may know the most recent one, but, uh, we're not going to name her, nor will I like to. Um, Nika's the one that matters. She's not my ex and nor will I ever want her to be my ex. Um, She's not involved with anyone. She's living the best of her single life. No, I am in a committed and loving relationship and the most healthy relationship I've ever been in. Um, 5'4". No, I am 5'6", 5'5", around that area. Again... I started TikTok when I was in Berthoud, Colorado. I do not, I was not born in Berthoud, Colorado. I was born in Pinehurst, North Carolina. If you don't know where that is, it's fine, whatever, but it's in North Carolina. I was born in Pinehurst, North Carolina. Spent a lot of my childhood in Charlotte. Then I spent a lot of it in Concord. And then I went to, um, then I went to, Colorado, Bertha, Colorado, then I spent a lot of my homelessness in Loveland, Colorado, then I came back to Concord, North Carolina, then I'm now in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it's kind of, I've been moving around a lot um, my whole life. It's kind of what happens when you're homeless, you just got to move around a lot. Um, I'm literally there right now, come back. No, I do not plan on going back to Colorado unless it is absolutely desired that I go back. Um, I am going back soon, maybe when I move to LA, um, on the drive there so I could see my dog. I did have a dog, um, named Sammy that is now being well taken care of by, a uh, old friend of mine. Um, but yeah, that, uh, when I drive to LA, I may be going through Colorado to get to LA. So when I drive through, I will be saying hi to my dog that I used to have, but I was homeless, couldn't take care of it. Couldn't take care of her. So I let um, an old friend, my friend at the time, take care of uh, her while I was figuring everything out. But am I gonna take her back? Probably not. Because um, from what I hear, he's taking very good care of her. And I think that, you know, stripping her away from what she's known for a few years is just gonna be horrible, so. Um, I think that, you know, putting her feelings first before me is what needs to happen. I can't be selfish and take her away from an environment that she's already grown comfortable with. So am I going to take Sammy back? No. Um, Will I always love her? Yes. I have a tattoo for her. And, you know. Are you and Vanessa still friends? Yes. Are you and Nika long distance? Yes. Um, so yeah, if all the, any of the people who have wrote these articles, like, are in here or want to know... Um, this is your time to ask. If you have any questions for me, like, or whatever, this could be like an interview, whatever. Are you still friends with AG and the rest of them? Um, I still love and adore all of them. Um, do I talk to them anymore? No. Uh, do I miss them? Yes. Uh, will I ever hang out with them again? Yes. But, yeah. When you, why are you moving to LA just for fun? Um, well, if you don't know, um, me and my manager have started a new house called Finest. The We, we were going to do The Finest, but it's kind of taken, so we do Finest SD. Um, we were going to be originated in San Diego because it's the finest city, but um, we're going to be in LA. Uh, we're moving around end, May, end, of the May, end of May, early June type beat. Um, but yeah, we're starting a house. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really exciting. Uh, we're still looking for new recruits. Um, we're gonna have a Zoom call with some of them soon. Um, but yeah, uh, if you don't follow us, it's, uh, 
Finest House SD on Instagram and on TikTok. So yeah. Who's all moving into the house? Um, as far as we know right now, um, at the moment, we don't know if people are gonna leave or people are gonna still stay with us, but we have Dallas, AP, me, Vanessa, CC, and Ocean right now. Um, but yeah, that's uh, who we have right now. And uh, we don't know if some people are leaving. Why is the SD at the end? Because we were going to be in San Diego um, because it's the finest city, but we decided to be in LA. So, yeah. For everything about your girlfriend. Um, the way she cares and the way that she uh, stays. You know, as much as my trauma has messed me up and, like, caused a bunch of pain to me, like, she still stays and helps me through it no matter how much stress I put on her. But it's been fixed, like, um getting help and I have been better. Can we see your box? What box? Like my memory box? How'd you meet your girlfriend? She was a fan of me on TikTok and uh, I saw her videos that she tagged me in and her duets that she made with me. So I hopped in one of her lives, told her to add me on Snapchat, gave her my number and we started FaceTiming and yeah. It was a rough ride, but, um, you know, we're happy now, so. What box are you talking about? I don't know. They were saying, can we see your box? Hi from Philippines. Hi. Did you, uh, trigger warning for this question. Did you ever cut? If so, how did you stop? Um, yes, I did. Your memory box. Okay, I can get to that in a second. Um, I did cut, um, a lot just on this arm but I've covered it with tattoos um I did used to cut my face like right here and like there's the scar right here like I did used to cut my face not for attention not for anything but like for the fact that all these people were telling me you're so beautiful you're so handsome you're so sexy you're so cute you're so hot and I was just like I didn't feel like I deserved to be that pretty hot cute to you guys so I cut my face to punish me and my looks um so yeah there was a bunch of people who were coming at me saying that you know I cut my face for attention I cut my face for this that that but that's just telling someone who cuts their arm that they do it for attention like there are different reasons why people self-harm you know like there's punishing themselves there's a uh, addiction there's like different reasons why like um do you still believe in Cameron yes um but like um yeah I had a lot of people who bullied me when I cut my face the first time saying that I did it for attention and I you know I lied about every about it every time and told people that my cat scratched me I accidentally cut myself on accident but yeah I uh I self-harmed on my face for uh, punishing myself. Um, and I stopped because I realized, honestly, I stopped because I found a new way to punish myself and that was mental destruction. Like, I pushed away everything good in my life and all that stuff to mentally self-harm myself. But then I stopped doing that because I was just realizing that the more time I spend punishing myself, the more time, I mean, the less time I have to actually live and, and experience life the way that I want to. Because the amazing thing about life is you get to choose whether or not, you know, something destroys you or builds you. Like, it's your choice. And I know t shit must be tough and you think that you can't control it, but you can. The reason why you think you can't control it is because you're trying to control diff things that you shouldn't be. You can't control what this person said about you. You can't control that this person broke up with you. You can't control that this person's doing this, do doing that. You can only control how you feel and what you do next. And I think that that's the most important part where people are saying, I can't control it. I can't sit here and fix myself. But can't is just another word for won't. I've said that a lot. You know, you say you can't do this. You can't get out of bed. No, you just won't. You won't do better. You won't get up. You won't move on because you just don't want to. Because whenever I say focus on the things you can change and change it, that doesn't mean 
focus on things that you literally can't change. Like what this person says, what that person does. Like you can't change anything from another person. You can change about what you do, what you do next, how you feel, and whether this thing is trying to teach you something or destroy you. Everything bad in your life is trying to teach you something. So learn from it. Figure out what it's trying to teach you. You know? Can we see your memory box? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get too much into it. Um, because it's kind of private. But, um, where'd my girlfriend put my memory box? Oh, over here. Um, these do have, um, things that I will not be showing you. Um, this is the ring pop where me and Blake got married. We got, uh, ring pops together. Um, I still have the ring pop in there that I ate. Um, these are all baby photos of me. My nipples are showing in here and I really don't think that that's what you guys want to see. But that's me as a baby right there. That ugly little thing right there. That's my cousin Dennis. Um, this is when I met Cam Newton. He's kind of a dick, not gonna lie. That's me right there. I was an ambassador for something, I don't remember. But yeah, Cam Newton's not a good guy. He's really mean. Um, this is the family photo of my family. Um, when my grandma passed, we had to all take a family photo. This is uh, my stepmom, it's my dad, that's my stepbrother. There's Gona, there's me, and that's my stepsister. This is me with long hair. My mom wanted me to wear a dress, but I said no. So I wore a button up. This was my first prom, casino prom. <coughs> this was my grandma, right there. She's holding me, that's Gona right here. My grandma's holding me. This is a better photo. My grandma, her name was B. Yang. This is my sister, and that's me, the ugly little thing right there. Wow, casino. Yeah, it was uh, my first prom. This is my recent journal that I've uh, written in. Um, yeah, um, just write sometimes when I want to. Hi, Cece. Um, this was my first journal. Um, it's not filled completely, but this was my first journal. Um, but yeah, this was my first journal that I had. I started writing in when I was 13. Um, this was my second journal. Um, this is when I got Sammy. Sammy did chew on it and destroy it a bit. But yeah, there's still some stuff in here. This is my recent one. Um, I got this one in a mental hospital. The second mental hospital I was in, I think, um, is where I got this one. Um... This is me and my sister. I'm the one in blue, looking depressed. Um, this was a Polaroid of me and one of my ex-girlfriends. I did crumple it. Not showing you guys who it is though. This is me. Thank you, Carly, for the uh, the things, confetti. That's me. Um, I have a lot of Polaroids from when I was a kid in here. Um, also if I find it, for some reason I have a photo of Madison Beer in here. Um, I don't know why. Oh, this is, a uh, my hospital band from February 2nd, 2017 when I tried to end my life. Um, it's my hospital band. I have another one in here from literally a year apart, like 2018. Um, this is Ethan. I don't know why I have his, um, school, his ID thing. I don't know why, but this is Ethan. He's such a beautiful man. Look at him. What the hell is this? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Oops. I want to find the photo of Madison Beer. I don't know why I have it in here. This is a letter from one of my ex-girlfriends. Um, kept it just for memorable things, I don't know. I just keep things because like, no matter what happened, like, no matter what happened between anybody, like, it happened to me, you know, so I just keep it. Um, 
This is when I worked at Sonic um, for like a week. Guess I worked at Sonic. Um, oh, here's my other one. Um, literally, this one is Feb. Like, f this is like only 10 days apart. February 10th, 2018. February 2nd, 2007. So these are like basically a year apart. A year and 10 days apart from when I try to end my life. Um, let's just say February's and January's aren't my thing. Um, this is an old promise ring from a girlfriend that I had. It says I promise on it. Um, yeah, that didn't work out. Um, but yeah, what made you look through all of this? Uh, someone asked, so, you know, whatever. Um, usually when I talk about this stuff, no one cares. So if you don't care, you can just leave, whatever. Um, but yeah, this is an old promise ring from an ex-girlfriend. This is... Um, from Our Last Days, it has, uh, if you don't know what Our Last Days is, it's a short film that I was in. I got one that says Skylar Lane, that was my character, and then one that says Mahua Lee. Skylar, yeah, was born April 21st, 2151. Um, but yeah, and then there's one that just says Mahua Lee. Um, this was from, uh, LGBT prom I went to. Kept it. Uh, oh, this is from Playlist. This is from Playlist Live. Last year. Uh, this is, a not gonna show, but this is, like, um, one of my girlfriend's, ex-girlfriend's, uh, photo thing that we had. Uh, this is a, this is a anniversary card that I got from one of my ex-girlfriends as well. So, like, oh, here's a photo of Madison Beer. I don't know why, it's been in my memory box for years and I have no idea why. But I think it was foreshadowing Madison Beer following me. So, yeah. For some reason I have this photo of Madison Beer in my fucking thing. I don't know why. Ooh, this was my school photo. Wasn't a good time for me. This is me. I'm gonna cover my boobs. But this is me as a kid. Because y'all don't need to be seeing kid boobs. But this is me as a kid. This was one of my first wallets that I had. Fila. But it uh, obviously was fake, so it was coming off. There's nothing in here. I just kept it. I got a lot of birthday cards, Christmas cards in here. Um, this is a <laughs> this is a photo that I had ripped apart because one of my ex-girlfriends gave me this. Be, uh, because of a trip that they had and they wanted to share this with me. Well, obviously that breakup didn't go well. So none of my breakups have went well at all. So, but do you ever miss your past? No, not even a little bit. This was a tattoo place that I went to. I didn't get a tattoo there. But. Oh, this is my parents married, my biological mom and my uh dad's marriage certificate when i was running away from home i was told that i needed to, i was told i needed to get uh certificates and i really thought that this was my birth certificate but this is just a marriage certificate from my parents my biological parents this is uh my actual birth certificate it's my mother's copy um if y'all don't know my real the way to spell my real name is capital m Lowercase a i space capital H lowercase u a like I don't know why but yeah I was born in Pinehurst County I mean Pinehurst North Carolina at Moral Moore Regional Hospital um my dad was born in Thailand my birth mom was born in California. But yeah, that's my birth certificate. <laughs> what is this? I don't know what this is. 
This is Yuki. Yuki used to be Gona's little bunny. That was such a bitch. So Mahua. Yeah, so like that. So that's how you legally spell my name. Our girls objects. The fact that you even have to ask that question. No. But thank you for asking at least, you know, but like no. Girls are not objects. And if you think they are, you have a huge problem and you're not gonna go anywhere in life. I'm sorry. Um, just, yeah, it's just a, kind of a recap of a bunch of shit. Uh, this is also me in preschool. Ooh, whoever taught me how to dress. Bitch. Um, this is... I got from um, a gay town, I think. Um, I don't remember what it was called. This is, what is this? I don't know what that is. What is this? My birth certificate again. What the hell? Why do I have so many birth certificates in here? Oh, God. Oh, this is a Polaroid from Our Last Days, me and uh, Lily. Um, but that's all from this one, really. Other, like, there are more things, but not things that I care to share on social media. Um, but I do have another box that has, like, some shit in it. Somewhere. Just need to figure out where my girlfriend put it, because she did clean my room. Um, this is kind of some stuff. This is when I hit 1 million. It's kind of broken. On TikTok. I don't know if you remember this. Um, I have a lot of letter. I have a lot of letters that you guys sent me in here. There's a bunch more, um, under my bed. It's all kind of messed with in there. Thank you for the rose. Well, who drew the picture in the back? Which one? That one? This was me. This was a fan. That was a fan. That was me. Um, it was also this one, but it fell. This is the one I painted too. It fell from the wall. Is your girlfriend okay with you keeping things from your ex? Yes. Um, she's 100% okay with it because she knows that th they were a part of me, you know, eventually. And she knows that I have no feelings for any of them anymore and that I'm, you know, I've moved on. She, tr she trusts me. Like, I've never cheated in my life, nor will I ever. Um, but yeah, I just keep those things for, like, memory you know, not for, like, sentimental, like, oh my god, I miss them. No, it's just for memory, you know. It happened. It was a part of my life. Handsome or gorgeous, what do you prefer? Handsome. I like handsome. On the Lee sister page, I'm not gonna know. We're no longer making any videos on there. Maybe not for a long time. That's why it's called a memory wax. Yeah. Most painful tattoo that you've had? Probably this one on my neck when it came down here. It's more ticklish. I'd rather it not. I'd rather it hurt than tickle. 
Shania, stop this. Shania, Brianna, do you guys want to play Fortnite? I updated mine. So if you guys want to play Fortnite, let me know. Full story of you and your girlfriend. I'm not going to go in full detail because it doesn't matter. Um, But she posted a lot of videos. She wanted my attention. She got it. She was a fan of me. Um, she simped over me. I was her TikTok crush. Um, whatever. Um, thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, she got my attention and then I hopped in her live and when I was in her live, I was like, this girl's different. You know, she's not like everyone else and she's really chill and we never stopped, like, every, I don't know, like, and like... Me and you have been together for six months, almost seven months now. Um, when April 22nd will be our seventh month. Um, but, yeah, I uh, noticed her, then I gave her my number. I gave her my Snapchat first, then I gave her my number in Snapchat. We FaceTimed, and we didn't have a moment of silence, an awkward silence, like, at all. Um, and I just thought that, you know, that was cool. So, you know, we had a rocky first five months that... You know, we knew each other because we started talking for like two weeks and then we stopped because I was personally not ready. Well, I wasn't ready to admit that I wasn't ready. I just was going through a lot of trauma and I was in a bad place. I was addicted to hydrocodone and I was like, not good. Um, so it was really hard for her to be with me. Also, she has commitment issues and it was hard for her to be with me. I'm her first ever relationship, you know. Ciao. Anyways, I was her first ever relationship, so it was kind of hard for her to just open up to me and, you know, stuff like that. So, for five months, um, she did reject me. Um, uh, it was a rocky part of our relationship, but... Fucking go away. Go away. Thank you. Um, but finally, after five months, um, I asked her to be my girlfriend through an argument which was really funny because she had been you know rejecting me for months and I was just finally ready to move on and talk to this other girl and she was like no she's gonna take up my time because she was always like I don't want a relationship because I don't want to talk to someone every day and FaceTime them every day and uh, um, sleep on the phone with someone every day and I was like girl you do that with me like she does that with me so I was just like, come on, like let's let's like let's be together. And she was like, no. And then I was like, okay, well I'm gonna go sleep on the phone with this other girl. Um, since you have been making me chase you for five months, I'm gonna just go and move on. She was like, no. I was like, okay, well then will you be my girlfriend? She was like, yes. And I was like, I ha I kept asking her for like days. I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? You like, are you sure? And she was like. Yeah, I'm f yeah, sure. We'll see how this goes, blah, blah, blah. And now we've been together for six months, almost seven months. And yeah, it's been a rocky relationship. But I mean, like, uh, we're, we're at the good part now, you know. We kind of did things, like, reverse. We didn't really ever have a honeymoon phase. Honeymoon phase, but now we're in it, you know. Isn't there an age difference between you guys? Yes, two years and two months apart. Um... And I know people are, if people who are just coming in now and they're like, oh my god, you're 20 and she's 17. Um, she turns 18 June 22nd. Um, and I met her uh, when I was 9? 19? Yeah, I met her when I was 19. Um, but yeah, we're two years and two months apart. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the Romeo and Juliet laws, yeah. Uh, they applied here and in Washington. And I do have her parents' consent to date her. So, yeah. Uh, not a pedophile. A lot of people try to pull that shit on me and like, you're a pedophile, you're a pedophile. Like, we're two years and two months apart. She's about to be 18. In June 26th. Like, in two months. Like.
She's literally almost 18, there's no problem there. Exactly. Do you support Muslim, Muslim Lives Matter? Yes, I support Muslims, Mexicans, Asians, Blacks. Like, I support, like, everybody. Like, Black people matter, Muslims matter. White people, the thing is, like, they've always mattered throughout history. So when people are like, white lives matter, you're like, okay. You've always mattered. Just because we're saying black lives matter, stop Asian hate and such shit like that, like, doesn't mean we're trying to be above you. And even if we were above you, that wouldn't be an issue. You've had your time. It's our turn. Like, let some POCs get some voices around here. Like, so, I mean, I support that every single person's life matters. Um, I just think that it's very hypocritical to say white lives matter not hypocritical like insensitive to say white lives matter when like you've always mattered white people have always mattered even when other people haven't even to this day like so when you're like white lives matter you're like okay you don't need to preach that. History can tell you that. Only white lives have mattered for years and years, decades and decades. Like, what nationality are you? I'm Asian and white. So when white people, white supremacist people are like, all lives matter, you're proving our point. Just because we say black lives matter, Muslims lives matter, anybody's lives matter doesn't mean we're saying we're above you. And even if we all, even if some people want to be above you, like some people, people of color want to be above you. Why does that matter? Are you so scared to feel the hate and pain that black people have felt, Muslim peoples have felt? That you're so scared that your privilege that you have, you can't just, I, I swear, any white supremacist person Puts, like, I wish that we could switch white supremacist people, like, switch their bodies with a black, like, slave back in the day, and have them live a week like that, and then have them come back. They're gonna know. They're gonna know the pain of black people. They're gonna know the pain of discrimination, of racism. Like, my girlfriend is Russian and white. Mainly Russian. Um, but yeah, like, can we see your hair? Yeah, it's kind of messed up right now, but that's my hair. Whenever it looks a mess, I just put a beanie on. Like, put a white, like, put a white supremacist person in a body of a black man in 2021 and have him get pulled over. Do it. Even a black woman, even a black child. Like, they'll finally figure out why we're so upset. Why we're so pissed off. And they're always like, go back to where you came from. Where did you come from? You, don't, you didn't come from here. Your people. Whatever. You kicked, you killed people. Kicked people out of this place. What do you think about the Nessa, Jaden, and Josh drama? I think that I've had a best friend of mine betray my trust and date my girlfriend um so i know exactly how josh feels and i know exactly you know the pain that he's feeling and especially since it's all over social media and him seeing him having to see that on paparazzi videos and shit like that like and edits of it like I'm on Josh's side. Nessa, I've been defending her for years, but that girl has an agenda. She has an agenda. First Charlie, now Mads. Like, Mads was very immature in putting it on social media, yes, but at the same time, I understand. Like, Nessa and Mads were friends, too. Nessa's done this to probably multiple women. Like, 
betraying people. So, like, I defended Nessa. I love Jaden's music, and I love Nessa's music. But, you know, like, it sucks to see that the people that- the people who make these music that I like is doing horrible things. Like, of course, I don't know the whole story, but I do know what it's like. Because literally, like, not even a week after Josh had made his podcast saying that I want- I'm waiting for Nessa to get her shit together so we can be together again. He says, no, we're not ever gonna be together again because of what she, like- She broke up with Josh for, like, you know, shit, and then, like, goes and be with Jaden. You know, like, I think that that's fucked, because I love the song La Di Dai. Like, I love it, and it sucks, you know, like, so, yeah, I think that that Josh and Mads deserve better. Do I think that Josh and Mads should get together? No, you don't, you don't put fire with fire, you know, I think that... Josh should go and move on and, you know, find his happiness elsewhere and Nessa's gonna know what she lost. Same with Mads. Move on elsewhere, Jaden's gonna know what he lost. Cause, you know, like, Jaden admitted that he wasn't good to her in the beginning of the relationship. He wasn't. So, and she stayed. You know, she took him back. They were together. And she stayed. So, like, I think all these people saying all this bad stuff about Mads, like, you gotta understand that, you know, yeah, it might be high school shit, but the difference is that the high school people don't have millions of people looking at them, so it's an, everyone's not talking about it. They're still kids. No matter how old they are, 21, anything, they're still kids. Like, I'm still a kid. Like, when you're upset in 2021, you post about it. You post your feelings. You post how you're feeling. Like, you cannot say that you haven't. Maybe your secret story on Snapchat, maybe a private friends only on your tiktok like you've posted something a uh, uh, sub tweet about certain situations you can't say that you haven't because i know some of you have you've ever been heartbroken you've sub tweet about it because i do it you know like i don't do it negatively i used to but not anymore but like um like if you're feeling upset about something you post about it it's, that's a coping mechanism for a lot of people all right so i think coming at mads for putting it on social media isn't something that we should be targeting her for it's hypocrisy all the people coming at her are hypocrites they're hypocrites you know so coming at mads for posting shit on social media about her being heartbroken and blah 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 being pissed off like i don't think that hating on someone for how they're feeling is something that we should be doing you know, like, obviously, if Mads is posting, like, oh my god, Jaden is such a horrible person, blah blah blah, then yeah, I would understand why people would attack her, because it's not something you should be doing. Don't fight fire with fire, you know? But, like, if someone's just sad, and they're feeling sad, or they're just, like, upset, and they want to post something without any context, or you might you might put two and two together, then, you know, let them do it. Who cares? The only JS drama, I just, I don't know too much about it. I saw a few videos about, like, um, a bunch of shit, you know, um, but at the, you know, at the same time, I don't know how I feel about it. I just think that, you know, being nice is an option. You know, you don't have to say that you're carrying a gun and threatening kids, you know, but at the same time thinking about it. Thinking about it from both sides, the kid did threaten her, and I've actually heard stories of her being threatened in the streets and threatened out in public, so of course she just feels the need to, but I know, I get it, it's a kid, you know, but kids can shoot people too, so it's just like, it's a complicated situation because like, that kid did threaten her first, and it's kind but, you know, saying that I carry, you know, it's not really, it's like a white supremacist thing to say, you know, like, I carry, that's like a Caitlyn Bennett thing to say, like, I get it, but, you know, defending yourself is different than threatening, you know, so, obviously, you know, if somebody said, hey, I'm gonna come shoot you, I'm not gonna sit back and just be like, okay, yeah, you know, like, so, some of the things that Jace is doing is un- unnecessary and unacceptable. But with the situation of the kid threatening her, I think that that kid should be punished. 
more than Jaius in that situation. <clears throat> because, like, you don't threaten people. I had a girl threaten me on my birthday. And whenever she was like, I was just like, don't threaten me. And she was like, what you gonna do about it? I was like, I'm gonna just let you be stupid. You know, there's there's that. You know, you can respond with, I'm just gonna let you look dumb. I had a girl threaten me and she was just like, stop this or else. I was just like, <coughs> Sorry, there's dust coming out of my AC. So yeah, it was kind of like... Do I think some of the stuff JS is doing is unnecessary and disrespectful? Yes. Um, but do I think that that kid should have threatened JS? No. Do I think JS should have responded the way that she did? No. But I don't know too much about that information to know what to do. Or what to say about it. Yeah, I think first steps to Jay needs, Jace needs to do is to understand that not everything is everyone's problem. Not everything that they do is someone else's fault. Like, inspire these kids looking up to you and take, take blame, you know? Instead of saying, you, 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 start using I statements. I did this. I did this. I feel this. I did that. You know, like... I think pointing fingers at other people is not really what you should be doing. I decay if that in the US, but here in the UK, if you flex it, you carry your terrible person. Yes. If you flex and you carry in the United States, you're mainly a white supremacist or a hick. Like a yee yee type person. Like, no one cares. If someone came up to me and was like, I'm carrying, I'd be like, show me that you can kill a human being. Shoot me. You think I'm scared to die? No, I'm not scared to die. If it's my time, it's my time. Kill me. You're threatening you got a gun on your hip. Shoot me. Shoot me. Because I bet you a hundred thousand dollars you're going to be worse in prison than I am in the afterlife. So shoot me. Like, someone comes up to me, I'm carrying, what do they expect me to do? Oh, oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm your servant. Oh my god. No. They come up to me and they're like, I'm carrying. I'm gonna be like, point it right here. Make sure you don't miss, because I swear to god, if I, if I live, I'm coming after you. I swear to god, your life is gonna be worse in jail than mine is. So make sure you don't miss. So, like, because I can remember a face. They would, li they would most likely not even see you. Exactly. So, you coming to me saying that you carry? Shoot me. Shoot me. Take a human life from this earth. I don't care. I think I'm scared. Ooh. Get the balls to say you carry. Have the balls to shoot me. Wait, I thought the uh, only Jay's drama was racial inappropriate things towards people of color. Um, <clears throat> I did hear about that, which is why I was saying, you know, some of the stuff that she was doing was disrespectful and unnecessary. <clears throat> I think people should stop using the I was young, I was dumb um, thing, you know, because, uh, you know, I was young and I did stupid things too, but I take claim for them and I'm like, I did that, yes. And I apologize, you know. <clears throat> and I think people should start apologizing before they get caught. Like. Because if you apologize after you got caught, it just makes it seem like you're apologizing because you got caught. Like, I've said it before on lives. Like, when I was younger, um, you know, you don't come out of the womb knowing not to say the N-word, you know. And I was in a really, like... Every, every, every person was, like, like, all my friends were black. And, you know, and I know a lot of people use that excuse, but it really matters because I had the white people at my school were saying the N-word. Like, this was, like, middle school, like, beginning of high school type B, and people were saying it, and they were okay with it. So it's just, it's just like if this. 
If I come up and punch you in the shoulder and you do, no one does anything about it, I'm going to automatically assume I can continue to punch you in the shoulder. It's kind of like that metaphor. So while other people were saying it, I was given the N-word pass, I guess. But I didn't, I thought the N-word was just like a bad word, like bitch, shit, and fuck. So when I said it as a kid, and I do, um, and I did, nothing has, nothing is out proving that I did, but I'm admitting that, you know, when I was younger, I did, because the black people at my school, um, and my friends around my neighborhood said that you can say it, you can say it, and they gave me the excuse that I'm Asian, I can say it, because you're a people of color, you can say it, so automatically in my, like, in my mind, I was like, okay, I can say it, and then it wasn't until I almost got beat up in high school to where I realized that I'm not supposed to say that, and I educated myself, and I was like, shit, so, I've said this before on many lives before, um, I apologize to the black community, um, for saying it, and if you're not black, you cannot sit here and say I forgive you, um, I apologize to the black community, and I feel like taking the step and admitting my wrong, and admitting that I did that before getting caught matters more than the people who make fake apologies when they got caught, because they got caught, you know, so, um, I don't think that there are any videos of me saying it, but I think that it's still really important to know the people, like, if you've said it in the past and don't lie, don't lie, and you know you've said it in the past, apologize for it before getting caught, before a video comes out of you saying it. I've never said the hard R. I've never went up to a black person and called them the hard R. Never in my life have I done that. I just thought it was a cuss word like bitch, shit, fuck. You know, so saying that, you know, I didn't, again, I didn't come out the womb knowing I wasn't supposed to say that, you know. My parents told me not to say bitch, shit, and fuck, so I just would always say it because I was a bad child. And then all the people around me were like, you know, don't. in the same category as um bitch shit fuck obviously i'm gonna think it's just a cuss word so i would say it and not think anything of it until like early high school days and then i got i almost got beat up for it rightfully so so um yeah i did used to say the n-word in the past not knowing the the connection between anything because my school was really beat down and horrible that no one taught you any of these things no one not my high school not my middle not my middle school nothing so again i apologize to the black community for saying that word in the past i did not know anything about it and i think apologizing before you get outed and caught is really important you know and if you choose that you want to cancel me and anything i will 100 percent accept it you know, because I didn't, I didn't need to be saying that as a kid, you know. So I had to educate myself because none of my teachers would teach you about that. And I think that that's really horrible. I think teachers should start teaching kids, like, y younger, before middle, I mean, before high school, um, about what that word is and how you should not be saying that. Do you want to inspire others more than anything? I want to inspire people to this whole situation. Inspire people to apologize before you get caught. If you know you did something bad in the past, take claim for it. You know, some people use the excuse, I forgot. No, you didn't. You know you did that. You just, every time you think about it, you just shove it off. You know, because you haven't got caught yet. So, um, take claim for what you did. Stop with these fake apologies out here, you know. My cousin is part of the black community. She says she thanks you for the apology. Of course. Um, if there are some black people that are still super mad at me, um, I understand. Um, and I will 100% take any punches that you want to punch at me. I will not fight back at all.
It's okay because you didn't know what that word meant. It's it's fine, by the way. I'm part of the black community. Thank you. Um, really means a lot. Um, but, yeah. I've been on live for too long. And my girlfriend has been texting me. So, I'm going to... Uh... I feel like you want to cry people saying they forgive you and I'm glad that's why I'm hopping off because you know hearing the word I forgive you something that I've always wanted to hear from a certain person and hearing it from you guys is kind of like 